And that seems like a lot of work. I think it's gonna be the hardest work. Welcome to a new install video. Now, we did all these videos in one day. Now, I saved this one for last because it's, that's gonna be the hardest one. What do you think? I'm already tapping out. Done. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing a Stita colder intake. We're doing the box there. But we're also gonna do the tube. So, two sets of instructions. One's got 20 steps, one's got 10. 30 steps. It should be fine. <laughs> She's shaking her head. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get the, we're gonna get all the tools together and let's get going. Flathead and Phillips head screwdriver all in one. Eight millimeter uh, wrench, 10 millimeter socket. T30 Torx bit, Allen's wrenches come, come with it. So yeah. Step one, we're gonna take this off. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up, up, up. And pull up and back. ST. <laughs> so if you're gonna follow along, you gotta get both of them out and um, do the steps together that are together maybe. We're gonna try to figure this out. Move engine cover, 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 remove engine cover, unplug the electrical connector for the AIT sensor. Loosen the hose clamp securing the rubber intake tube to the hard plastic intake tube. Figure one. Loosen the hose clamp it said? Mm-hmm. Hose clamp is somewhere there. Sorry. Yes. I think what we're gonna do is take out the air box first. As you can see, I already have an AEM filter in there, but we're gonna replace all that. So you gotta take out all these screws. This one, which I think is the eight millimeter. What's that? <laughs> it's not an eight millimeter. That's not the right one. No. Oh no, I can't be doing this with this thing this whole time. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> this is not, this is not, no. It says eight millimeter, but five sixteenths will work. That doesn't come. Yes. Do not oil. Oh, that's a big filter. Look at that. Hmm. Let's unplug this thing. Figure one, which is right here, it says. Right here. I don't see that down there. It's not this. <laughs> that's pointed in the wrong. That's not in the right spot. Yeah, I think you did the right thing, pulling that one off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Check. Right. Check. Unclip the rubber strap securing the cold air feed tubes from their mount at the cold air feed coming from the core support. Figure one. Right. So right here. Mm. Unplug this. Correct? Because that, that gets this thing off. Alright, moving on. And then you gotta pull off this back piece too. It's all connected because all this is coming out. Yeah. I can hardly wait for all this. Yeah, so that's already loosened up. Now we gotta loosen up the hose clamp down there. This one? Gently pull on airbox and dislodge the rubber grommets beneath the airbox from their locating holes in the inner fender. Gently pull intake tube off of the plastic tube. Lift out the entire assembly with the intake tube and cold air feed tubes attached in one piece. Did you get all that? No. What was the first step? You have to what? pull up. Wait, don't you have to loosen this Yeah, what, why would I not loosen that yet? It says that you're taking the whole thing out, but... Did you miss... Oh, step one is uh, loosen the, the hose clamp. Good job. It's also step one on the, uh, the tube. So I think it's this one right here. 
Remember we had a heck of a time yeah, getting this, this one? And then we, we it turned it around, didn't we? Yeah, I flipped it around the other way. Well, maybe we didn't take off the engine cover, which made it hard. <laughs> that was probably a rookie That's mistake. probably what we didn't do. <laughs> Bunch of rookies. Bunch of rooks doing this. I mean, it's loosened, but... Uh... Okay, now we should just be gently pull... Right, step four, gently yeah. pull things out. Um, yeah. How of its grommets. Okay, check. Uh, well, I mean, I loosen that clamp so good that it's all the way off. Look at the leaves and stuff in that sucker. Hmm. Yeah. That's the old box. That's all the air that flows in there. Hmm. Next up. Remove two rubber grommets from their respective studs on the bottom of the air box. Insert the grommets back into their respective holes. Okay. <laughs> Where are the grommets it's talking about? Okay, so I got one grommet back in. That's only one that comes off. I'm gonna move on to this piece because I think we should have all of this taken out before we put in the new air box. So we've already done removed the engine cover. We already loosened the hose clamp. Oh not that one though. Remove the three bolts securing the hard plastic intake tube to the engine. Note the location of the stud that secures the engine cover. So we gotta replace, we gotta take off these, these bolts. Mm -hmm. They're back there. Oh yeah, and the stud that holds the engine cover is on one of them, right there. Take out some bolts. There, there, and there. Correct. Neat, looks like an eight. And it is, and I'm gonna need the ratchet, there we go. Not by these hands. Second bolt. How am I gonna get this off? Some pliers, maybe? Pliers. That was easy. Okay. Loosen the hose clamp, securing two sections of the hard plastic intake tube. Oh. Intake tube together. Remove the front section of the tube from the car. Yes, sir. On the way. Now, as I knock down. That, nowhere does it mention the nine nine thirty two to use. Just a. Probably good, it looks like. Okay. Uh, voila. Uh, buck up. Voila, look at that. Factory one. Pretty, um, pretty tiny, kind of flat. So, hmm. All right, next step. Next step. Remove the PCV, PCV hose from the rear section of the intake tube and remove the other end from the valve cover and discard. Uh, figure two. Figure four, figure three, five, seven, six. 
so figure two. Oh, it's before figure one. It says figure two, but what, what the... Um... I don't see. Maybe it just means back here. I don't... It's, it's not It's not pointing at anything for figure one. Yes. Okay. Let's, uh... It just pulled off. It did say to take it from the intake too, correct? Yes. And it said to discard it, but it's got a electrical harness plugged into it. <laughs> we'll leave that for now. We will leave that on there Dang. for now. Next step. Loosen the hose clamp, secure the hard plastic intake tube to the turbo. Gently pull up on the tube and remove it from the turbo. Okie dokie. And it's uh, 932. 930 seconds. 932. Okay, there's the hose clamp way back here. There, there it go. is. That's the one you got to loosen to get off the turbo to get this whole part off. That's, that's going to be the hard one um, to get. So, and probably put back on. And probably put back on, yeah. It's gonna be pain in the butt. Anyways. So now I gotta figure out what, what, what size that is. Okay, so I got it loosened. Maybe not enough. Okay. Maybe not. But it's it's finger. Finger. There it goes. Uh, it just comes out of the engine bay. Somehow. Like I saw. Let's look at that. That's what was attached to the turbo. Now, I was concerned now because this wasn't very tight on, on, on the turbo. This was kind of loose. That's weird. Hmm. We're going to do insta installation to see the intake tube upgrade. We're going to do that first for the airbox. So install silicon rubber onto the turbo inlet. Install and tighten the small hose clamp onto the turbo inlet side of the reducer. Figure three. What does that mean? Figure three right here. Uh, it doesn't help. Okay. So the turbo is kind of small. So I guess the small one goes on it. And then we have to... And a clamp goes on here? What what clamp? Do we do we reuse the clamp? Small hose clamp onto the turbo inlet. Well, there are hose clamps. Oh, it came with new ones. Yes. So let's put the small one on here. That That's a high quality piece of material here. Yeah, it's going to be this thing. But I want it this way. Nope. Got to have way. it to where we can reach the... Yeah, I got to be able to reach it. So that's a nice hose clamp there. So we're gonna put this on there, right? Yes. Yay. We're gonna install that first before we get the. Okay, let's do that. Put it on this. This is the eight millimeter. So kind of put it on there a little bit. I'm gonna shove this down on there. Hmm, that's nice. Just a hint. It's a hard camera shot because it's it's right there. So it's a hard camera shot. But I'm going to use both hands to do this. Just like this. Holding camera. And then down here. Voila. And it goes right on. Nice and snug. Right on there. Now just tighten up that. So the next step is to um, place their larger hose clamp over the reducer and let it rest on a lower clamp in our turbo so got the bigger clamp so this one is the eight millimeter clamp or, or uh, socket and just put this back onto the uh, ring and turbo carefully insert the upgraded inlet tube into the reducer on the turbo bring the hose clamp up to the top of the reducer and tighten make sure the hose clamps is lined up with the reducer all the way around and not off of one edge yeah that's true all right 
let's do that now which is this hole so this goes down in there this is nice mm. okay here we go Let's have a look down there. Yeah. Like under that. Hard to see. Hard to see. Hmm. Mm -mm. So this one was the hard step right here. That was hard. So now install the rubber intake hose from the air box onto a great and see we're not doing that because we're, we're doing full-on new state of stuff take the supply thread pcv adapter install it into the state intake tube at the welded insert this thing into here now secure the factory pcv line to the state adapter which okay. is that piece that's back there hanging out. Yeah. So now we have to get back there and install that. Wow, this is not going to be fun. <laughs> I can maybe get it it's right, right there. Here? Yeah. Oh, man, there's no space. Right here. Oh, my goodness. There's no space. Now, this is going to be the hard part, getting this thing tight. I may want to just move the camera to see what I'm doing. This is hard. I don't know how I'm going to install that. Okay, I'm going to leave this here. Um, I'm going to have to see, that's, that's what I'm working with. I got to get that thing tightened down, right? This thing right here, tighten down. Look how much threads I got. It's super tight already, but it's not all the way seated. Yeah. So with the PCV thing going back there, it doesn't fully tighten on mine. So hopefully it's okay. But so the step after that was to secure the, oh, this one. Secure the factory PCV line to the Steeda adapter so with the adapter on i hooked it up so now we're going to install the, the bolt that they supply this thing onto the bracket down here like so it's a 10 hard to see it's a 10 millimeter I wouldn't tighten that down too much. That's good. Cool. So next up is to install and tighten down the stud back. Okay. Got the stud. The air box install. So last thing we did was this one right here. Remove the two grommets, even though my air box only had one. So remove the rubber housing that the color feed tubes mounted to on the core support. It simply pulls off with the small metal clip. Step six. Okay. Um, that's somewhere right there. Flathead. Oh, we just yanked that sucker right off. We don't need this part. We don't need any of this part. So, parts just coming off the car. Remove the AIT sensor, which is, uh, I think it's air intake temperature sensor itself from the intake tube by removing the eight millimeter head screw and gently twist the sensor while gently pulling forward. So models, there's no, you know, screw or simply just twist and remove the AIT sensor. Figure one. Figure one. We pulled that little grommet out, remember that? Mm -hmm. So we did already. Next one, disconnect 
the hood latch cable from the bracket. Remove the cable from the pivoting bracket by swiveling the bracket around. Pulling cable up. Figure two. Figure two. Right here. Remove from tabs for easy installation. Okay. That's right here. Okay, yeah. I think we need to pull all of this out first. I've seen a video on this part. <laughs> I think we'll go up and out. Up and out. This just comes out like that. This just simply pulls out. As it says, easy installation. Done. Assembly of the seated color and Ooh. Install the ATS sensor onto the airbox. So, so what are we doing now? How can we install something that's bolted to the car onto the airbox that's sitting in a box on the ground? And still have to put the rubber housing on top of it, all this other stuff. What's it talking about? We didn't do correctly was we didn't pull the thing that was in here or there. Yeah, it's this thing. You just twist and pull. You twist and pull. It comes right off. Then you install this grommet onto the new airbox. Shove this thing through it. Yeah. Okay, so here is the air intake temperature sensor put onto the new airbox. I'm facing it up. I think that's correct. What the picture shows. Now moving on. Install the front mounting bracket. Install the provided 10, 32, 3 quarters Phillips head bolts from the inside pointing out. Install and tighten the lock nuts. See figures 4 and 5 for correct orientation of the bracket. There's 4. And there's 5. Okay. Okay, so here's the airbox. Here's the bracket. So, it's kind of strange, but you have to put screws from the inside out like this. Get one locking nut on there. Salt and tighten. Tighten it down. Okay. We gotta go install the velocity stack. Use the provided 1030 by half inch. Loosely start all four bolts before tightening any of them. See figure six. Figure six, velocity stack. All right. Look really nice. Oh yeah, look at that. So you're gonna put this facing out. That's nice. It goes like so like that. Okay, yep. Four bolts. So it does they do provide a, a Allen wrench, so man down. Man down. Oh can okay, you see I'm going almost Next step. So we did 11. Let's go to 12. Install the barbed stud onto the bottom of the airbox. Use the provided quarter inch dash 20 hex bolt, hex head bolt. Install two washers between the barbed stud and the bottom of the airbox. Figure seven. So that thing. Okie dokie. <laughs> That's correct. washers installed this which on number 13 install the install the rubber trim around the outside edge of the shield if the trim will not stay in position a small slit on the inside of the corners may be necessary to relieve some of the stress in the transitions Ooh. okay that's gonna be fun we're gonna hope that it stays so it's this 
onto this. Hmm. Yeah. It's probably gonna have to have slits in that one steep corner. Probably gonna have to go to the. So we got that the weather shirt and put on to seal it but it didn't really tell us how far to put it on the end so if we have to change it it'll be when it's installed so i don't know how that's gonna be but that's how it looks okay so next step is 14 install the silicone hose onto the turbo inlet pipe um so we have the Steeda tube, so we may have to trim it, so we got to see. Uh, install both hose clamps loosely over the silicone hose, but do not tighten. Okay, so let's find those. So it's just this. And then we got two clamps over here. Clamps. Let's tighten them down like this. So, let's slide this on, I guess. Okay, well, let's assemble the airbox into position because it is one we're on, right? Yeah, 15. Place the assembled airbox into position. The barbed stud will fit into the factory rear grommet. Yes. Okay, let's, let's attempt this now. I'm not excited. I'm not excited part. at all for this part. <laughs> so, we probably are going to have. Oh. I don't know. Let's, let's just see if we can get it on there without it on there. Well, of course you Okay. Well, what was that? Well, you're closer to where you need to be. There you go. It's got what? I, it'll shove up on there. I know. It's said the... to trim it for aesthetic purposes. Well, we don't care about aesthetic. That looks okay, fine. That, that looks fine. A little bit tighter so that... There you go. Okay. I'm going to show you what, what we just did. On there. On there. And that, that looks perfectly okay to me. As long as the engine cover still goes on okay. Now this guy's heightened down the brackets. Okay, what a pain in the butt that was getting our box in there. We just had to move the um, weather stripping a little bit. I don't know how correct, how it's supposed to be. So we tried. Anyways, now using the T30 Torx bit, install the provided M6 self-tapping screw through the front bracket and onto the hole in the core support. Tighten this screw until the bracket sits flush. Hmm, please do not over tighten. See figure eight, right here. So they already have the cable through there. Oh yeah, the cable's already through there. Wait, wait, wait. Why are we doing that? Brought the hood latch, okay. Install a silicone hose into the velocity sack, which we already did that. <laughs> Reconnect the electrical connector. Reinstall the engine cover. Enjoy. Okay, so let's work on, let's do this one. Okay, that should be good. It says not to over really tighten it is flush. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's put this up through here. Back through the grommet. There you go. Oh. There we go. Back up here. Oh, <coughs> there we go. Here. Oh. Let me just pull that that way. <laughs> oh, that makes it easier. There we go. Put that back in there. Oh, this is not shit now. Voila, there we go. There we go. Good latch done. Hopefully it still works. <laughs> okay. So we did the hood latch cable. Oh man, zoom out. So we did the hood latch cable. Install the silicone hose onto the velocity stack. Tighten both hose clamps. Let's tighten those down now. So the, the, right the flange is like right here. So you okay. want to just go above that. So, so what size of a, it is a 5 sixteenths. Let's tighten down some hose clamps. Let's 
next step. Enjoy. Well, it, does, it never says to put in a filter. Well, maybe it assumes that you know how to install a filter. Where's the Where's the filter spot? Oh, reconnect the electrical connector for the AIT. It is right here. <clears throat> yeah. Goes right there. Done. Uh, that thing just sits down now. Apparently, it doesn't have a flange for that. Hmm. That's weird. Okay. Filter. Even though instructions don't say to do it. So let's get it open first. Hmm. Except for this oil on it, all over the area. Okay. That's really nice looking. Now, install this into here. Wow, that was the last step. <laughs> Here we install this battery cup box cover. Even though I didn't say to take it off, but it made sense to take it off. So there's that. Now let's do the engine cover. So earlier I put the um that way over there. That's the wrong hole. It goes here. That's a lucky step. Well, you should have got the thing that's how I figured it out last time. It's not the ST. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh goodness, that was um, a chore to say the least. You only dinner. Dinner. Yes. Yes. Engine cover on. Got the Stita. Turbo tube there, going all the way down here to the Stita Calder intake box. Looks good. I just don't know if we did this correct, because look, there's a gap here. But there's also, it's weird, there, there's a hole down here. Down there, there's a hole. There's a hole between this thing right here, and there's a hole up here. So hot air will get somewhat in there, so. Okay, so it's, the install's done. Huge pain in the butt. Uh, we're about to do the first start of it. Hopefully everything's right. Okay, go for it. Lighting's a little bad, but this is our first test drive. It's our test drive with the new cold air kit installed. Took us what? Two hours? I don't know. Two hours to do? I'm hungry. <laughs> don't want to hear too much in here. Wow, it was loud with the hood open. I'll tell you that. Hmm. 
I thought that you would hear more noise. Um, let's roll down the window. Let's see if we hear more out, outside. Hmm. Even with the windows down, you really don't hear anything. It may feel a little punchier. How do you think? Do you think it feels any better? I mean, I can't really tell as far as like, I mean... I mean, you could kind of hear it just then. Yeah. But it, you can't hear it in the cabin of a car. Like, you can't... Yeah. Like, before you could hear stuff in the car. Yeah, since we did the Symposia delete, we got rid of the, the fake noise coming in. So... We've done a lot of things to this car to this car to today. I'm not hmm. sure that I can really tell a difference, but two, I'm in a neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I'm going 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Let's watch the boost gauge. You can hear it there. Whoa! Hmm. So, just got back from the maiden voyage with the Stita colder intake install in the big turbo inlet pipe um inside the cabin not much difference you can hear a little bit when you really get the turbo spooled up but when you have the hood open it's like deafening it's, it's so loud pitch. so high loud pitch. with the turbo so yeah. i think it feels a little, a little bit more um power comes on really fast peppier i should say but we won't know until we drive it for a couple days and see so was that a fun install no no was not fun at all. No. And the instructions were kind of. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some of the some of the steps were maybe a little out of order, and then yeah, um, it wasn't really clear on some of the steps. We kind of had to improvise and go back, especially on the um, trim. Yeah, the trim. We had to trim it up because the hood, the hood. Um, Latch. The, the, no, no, the rod, the prop rod. Prop rod. Yeah, it, it wouldn't even wouldn't. go down, so we had to cut the, the weather stripping just to fit it. So, so there were a few things that it yeah. maybe didn't tell you that you would have to do, and then it didn't really explain a lot of the steps clearly. But um, yeah, you could figure it out. Just take yeah. a little more time. Yeah. Anyways, that was great. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. Uh, ring the bell, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for being here. Until the next video. Bye-bye. Number 11? Oh. oh. You're way down here. Well, we didn't do the velocity step, did we? Did you skip a step? We went from 10 to 12. <laughs> what did you do? I think that's wrong. I think we, we made a boo-boo. It goes right here. Doesn't it? No, it goes right here. <laughs> what are we doing wrong here? <laughs> what are we doing wrong? This has to go on top. Is this the closest one? That's 